Now to the other major story tonight, the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. There are signs that chaos is taking hold. In Tacloban, a gunfight is reported between the army and a gang. There's fear in the streets, driven by stories of inmates escaping prison. Elsewhere, thousands overran a food warehouse. At least eight people were crushed when a wall collapsed. The death toll from the typhoon now sits at more than 2,300. As many as 670,000 people are displaced from their homes. The government says 29 cities are still isolated and haven't yet restored contact with the outside world. The CBC's Chris Brown is on the ground in the Philippines, and he's got more on relief efforts. Chris. Peter, there is so much need in the Philippines now. Many places are feeling overlooked by the relief efforts. We visited one area north of Cebu and saw some heartbreaking scenes. Driving north, what strikes you first are the hundreds of children holding signs at the side of the road asking for food and water. This was a poor region to begin with. And now up to 90% of the buildings around here are either destroyed or damaged beyond repair. My mother, my mother. This woman was one of so many who stopped us and asked for help. Three kids, yeah. I have no money to continue uh, study school, college, sir. Very, 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 very. <laughs> For now, they're living under tarps. This is the village of Bogo, or at least what's left of it. As you can see, the winds totally flattened all the trees here. Every house has a, a coconut tree through the roof of it, and on the ground, there's uh, power, power lines as well. This used to be a neighborhood for more than 100 families, but every home here is decimated and the people here have no place to live. Further along the highway, we pass steel and concrete buildings that were ripped apart. In the town of Medellin, we were surrounded by hungry people. No house, no money, no money. You have water? No, no. 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 As we were there, a truck carrying rice, milk and other supplies pulled in, but the besieged volunteer told us it's meant for an even worse off community further down the highway. I'm sorry, we wish we could, but it's already scheduled for there. The community school, which lost its roof, is made of concrete, so a lot of families came here as the typhoon struck, which undoubtedly saved many lives. Up to five families are now living in each of these classrooms, including Marissa Suzanne and her eight children. Her older boys are out trying to rebuild their house, she says. Imagine trying to actually run classes here. Principal Rosanna Godinez says all 100 teachers lost their homes, so how can they expect to teach? Yes, it's really hard. It's really hard thing. No? I think in my life, this is the most uh, damaging typhoon in this, in the Philippines, in this country. On our way back, we finally saw some signs of help. A small convoy with volunteers throwing water and packaged noodles to those at the side of the road. In the mad scramble to get the supplies, it's incredible no one was hit by a car. For all the suffering that we saw, that area may actually be better off than many. There was no storm surge in those villages, so the death toll is in the dozens rather than in the hundreds or even thousands like it is elsewhere. Peter. Chris, so there's a lot of questions being asked about why aid is taking so long to reach those in need. Is, is something getting in the way? Well, we have seen many Filipino businesses rush in to help, lots of assistance from universities, as I say, private businesses. So the issue may be simply the scope of the disaster area, impassable roads, and the sheer numbers of people that need help. Peter. All right, Chris, thanks. Chris Brown in the Philippines tonight.